So actually, there are slight changes that we can find in the purchase module, which as that you can directly search from the UI itself. The most thing that we gonna discuss is about the debug mode. Is it really time consuming, right? Yes. But now Odoo has come as a time saver. <laughs> So welcome back to Tectonic. I'm your host Aishwarya and this is your co-host Jarina. Okay, so after a long time, right? Yes. We are back with another episode. So what are we up to today? We will be concentrating purchase module today. Okay, so not as the previous episodes. Today we are concentrating on a single module which is the purchase module, right? But so we, yeah, first and foremost thing that we gonna discuss is about the debug mode. Is it only related to purchase module? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's actually a common thing okay so i hope you guys have heard about the debug mode right so if you are familiar with odoo obviously they'll know what debug is so what is it about the debug okay in previous versions and all actually we have to just navigate into the settings in order to enable the developer mode or the debug mode so it's actually time consuming right yes but now odoo has come as a time saver and what odoo has bring i mean brought is that you can directly search from the ui itself like as if we search for other modules or not if you just type debug there what we can do we will get the debug mode it's that simple so that's the brand new thing which we have to say now this is take it as a bonus point because it's not related to a point i mean a specific module right yes. now let's move on to the purchase module yeah so what are we talking about the purchase module so actually there are slight changes that we can find in the purchase module which actually optimizes your time your cost and digitization yes so we've actually listed some topics over here and uh, the first thing which i'm going to start is about the rfq management okay. so rfq is basically an inevitable part of the purchase module right so you know if in case of i mean in sales quotation might be the main hero but here in purchase rfq is the main uh, you know part so here we are going to talk about the rfq management uh, in which you can actually cancel the rfqs in a single click yeah am i right yes yes so, so this truly optimizes your time yes. yes so what you have to do is that you can just select multiple rfqs for that you can just go to the filter and group the uh, rfqs by vendors and choose rfq and you can just select the RFQs that you want to just cancel. So as you just select all these multiple RFQs, is it like, you know, we'll be having multiple RFQs, which we don't need. Yeah. Okay. So you can cancel all of them simultaneously. Is that yes. what you're saying? Yes. We have a button to cancel that. This is indeed time, you know, saving one, right? Yeah. It's a time saver. That's it. So that was the first one, which is RFQ management. Next, we have another topic, which is RFQ merging. Yeah. So just imagine there's a scenario where a single vendor is creating multiple RFQs or you find RFQs by the same vendor, uh, like in a different number. Okay. So I am planning to merge it. Was that possible in the previous version? No, it was not possible. But I'm telling that it is possible in the new version, which is Odoo 80. So here you can actually merge these RFQs where you have the same vendor. So that's the and other one. Yeah, the advantages of using the merging of RFQ is that this truly, um, I mean, avoids the confusion. Yeah. Because it's merging multiple RFQs of a same mentor, right? Yes. So actually, uh, that help you to manage your accounting and other business process. Your confusions have come to an end. <laughs> yes, right. Okay, next what we have? We have the RFQ management from the email or portal. Email and portal. Yeah. What is it? It means that when we just create a purchase order or RFQ, <laughs> actually we can just make the discussion uh, with the RFQs or the purchase order for the users and for the vendor. So actually we have a button called send by email. Mm -hmm. So as we just choose that button, we can just send this quotation to the vendor. Okay. So the user and vendor can have a clarification with the product prices. That is they can communicate. Yeah. Okay. Communicate and all those communication would be visible under the chart. Okay, so whatever communications are taking place there, all of this is updated in the chat. Yes. Is that so, what you're saying? Yeah. Now, and what is the role of the portal over here? Okay, so when we uh, just send this quotation by mail, actually, the messages or the chatting will be taken from the vendor's 
portal. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So that's the role of email and portal in RFQ. That's really interesting. Mm. So next, we have this return for exchange. So I'll talk about this scenario and you can explain it to the whole, okay? So return for exchange. Now, it's a very common scenario, right? In every situation, even in online shopping, if you buy a product, if there is certain damage or if you don't like the product or even if the quality is bad, you have an option to return it for exchange. So that's what is introduced here in Odoo as well. Yes. So you can explain it in detail. Okay. So you can actually uh, return that product directly or you can also exchange the product mm -hmm. so if you are just going with a return for exchange while uh, delivering the new item to you you can just return the previous item mm -hmm. so actually that is one of the um, so this is actually like we are exchanging the product means the damaged the product item. is given and the new one will be received okay. yeah exactly mm -hmm. so that's so right this saves your time with in many cases of your business. I think Odoo is actually concentrating more on customer satisfaction. Yeah. Right? Okay. Next, we have uh, another thing which is called purchase order template. Yeah. What is it? So, purchase order template is nothing but actually this is something related to our sales template, quotation template. We have such no, a no, thing, actually right? it's something related to the purchase agreement. Purchase agreement. Yeah. So, actually to manage with the purchase template, first we have to enable the feature purchase agreement from the configuration settings of the purchase. Okay. So, we can find it under the purchase, purchase agreement. agreement. Okay. Okay. So, when you uh, want to order multiple product with multiple quantities or with different prices, you can just use this template. Okay. Okay. So actually, uh, you can just create. Uh, I mean, the thing is that you don't need to create the purchase order with multiple quantities and multiple product uh, from scratch simultaneously, mm -hmm. or, or whenever you want to uh, buy certain items. Okay. Instead of that, you can just use this quotation. Mm -hmm. So you there might create a con confusion between the blanket. Yeah, that's what I was about to ask. What is the difference between the blanket order yeah. as Blank well as this? Oh uh, yeah. Um, actually, both are uh, purchase agreements. But the difference is that whenever you create a blanket order, the quantity of the product will be set to zero. Mm -hmm. And uh, blanket order is basically used for purchasing bulk item. Okay. And all those items would be delivered in different delivery dates, mm -hmm. which means we can just split the deliveries of the item. Okay. But in case of a purchase template, it won't split the um, delivery of the item. Okay. Instead, it's a template or pre-made document to buy a certain item. Uh, like a ready-made thing which yeah. we can use. Right? Yeah, multiple times we can use. Okay. So we don't need to uh, build everything from scratch at the time of purchase. Okay, so now my confusion is clear. <laughs> so next we have amount in a local currency. Okay. Yeah. So actually these all are used for optimizing your cost. This purchase template as well as the amount in local currency and all. Okay. So by default, we know we will have a local currency uh, for a company. Mm -hmm. I mean, the company may be configured uh, upon uh, the localization, mm -hmm. right? So we will have uh, certain currencies that is configured to our Odoo database. Okay. So whenever you just try to create a purchase order or RFQ, by default, it will have a currency that is configured uh, for a company? Yeah, default company. Okay, okay. 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 But um, we know the same product will be selling by different vendors and they may be from um, a different other regions. Yeah, okay. different regions or maybe dealing their uh, product with other currencies. Okay. So let's say that uh, cabinet wood doors. Maybe both uh, the, pro I mean, the product cabinet wood door will be having $50 or 50 dirham. Okay. Now, by time when we just have a glance on the price of the product, it's just 50. Yeah. And uh, we know when we just convert that into the currency, like $50 into, let's say our company currency is an Indian rupee. Yeah. Okay, once we convert both of them, there'll be a huge difference, difference. between the amount. So actually the uh, users or the business can just go with uh, the, they can actually calculate the currency gain or loses over there. Mm -hmm. Using okay. these different currencies. Okay. That is uh, the use of amount in local currency. Okay. And so if you want to find the report also, you can easily get that report from the accounting module. Okay. So that's really interesting. Yes. Right? I like it very much. Next, we have this super purchase PDF. Okay. So super purchase PDF, as the name indicates, it's something related to PDF. Yes. Okay. So take the purchase module. There you will be having this RFQs, PDF and all, right? You can simply drag and drop it into the sales module and create a quotation out of it. 
Yes. Can you can you believe it? Is that whatever quantities that you have given in your purchase module we will be reflected here in the yes. newly created quotation. The product, the quantities, the price, everything will be uh, just appended into the quotation. Okay. So it's it's really simple as well as an interesting one. That is, and it's something an exciting feature. Yes. The eyes we don't have to do much with it. That is. Effortlessly, you can create a you know sales quotation just by dragging and dropping a okay. simple PDF. Yes. My God, purchase PDF. Yeah, purchase PDF. Sorry. <laughs> okay. And finally, we have the purchase order and bill matching. So uh, we know that there is no feature for making down payments for the vendor bill, right? Yes. So actually, you can just go with the purchase order or bill matching to manage with the down payment or advance payment for the vendors. Mm -hmm. So the thing is that uh, we just want to make a small payment for a purchase order uh, with a huge amount. So in this case, uh, actually, when we just create a purchase order, uh, we will get the reference number, right? So we can just actually, in usual cases, we'll be creating a bill, right? Yeah. So in this case, we can just create a purchase, purchase order, order and save it, right? Yeah. And save it and uh, get the reference number of the purchase order. Okay. While saving itself inside the purchase module, I think there you can uh, see this bill yes. matching. Yeah. A new, you know, button or a thing called bill matching. Yes. Or okay. you can just create a bill against this purchase order from the accounting module. Okay. So whenever you're just creating a bill, what you have to do is that under the description, under the invoice lines, you have to set like payment for this particular, that is the reference which we uh, copied. Okay. Yes. And you can set the amount and afterwards you can just manage or match this bill against the purchase order. Mm. So actually we can just make an advance payment or a down payment. Uh, down payment, payment actually. Yes, down payment for our vendor bill. And so actually, uh, till Odo 17, we had no features to manage the advance payments or discounts for the uh, vendor. Like, suppose uh, I've created a purchase order for a product where the amount I'm having is 100. Yeah. Okay. So uh, like once you save it, there'll come, there'll be that bill matching thing over there. And once you go to accounting and create a bill, like copying the reference, creating a bill with this reference and I'm paying 50 rupees only. Yeah. What happens then? then uh, you can actually match your this bill with the purchase order. Okay. Okay, fine. Okay, fine. is that clear for you? Yes. <laughs> okay, so that's bill matching, right? Yes. And that's a newly uh, introduced one inside the, you know, payment related thing inside the purchase module. Smooth. Actually, okay. these are the small changes that you can find under, yeah, for, for, you know, why telling you it, it might be small, you. yeah, but it's not small. The impact it brings on this whole module is huge. Yes. Okay. So is that all? Yes, that's it. So today we are wrapping it with all these features which we have talked about the purchase module. So I hope you guys are happy with it and you guys understood what we were talking about. So and please, all, yeah, please do let us know your, you know, what to say, feedbacks. Yes, feedbacks, sorry. So please do let us know your feedbacks through the comments. Okay, so that's it. Thank you for watching. Thank you so much for watching and we'll be back with another episode.